override of the Regent's escape door. Request granted. Opening the Regent's door. Put your hands where I can see them. Now! Lord Capone is sedated. Stand back. If you move an inch further, I will snap the neck. If you harm the Regent. If I harm the Regent, you fail. Now stand back. Okay, everyone calm down. What is it that you want? Because if you wanted to kill the Regent, he would already be dead. I want to get out of here, alive. Have a car for me outside. I'll take the Regent and let him off once I am at a safe distance. Seriously? You want a getaway car? I will break Lord Capone's neck with very little effort and you know it. <gasps> if I'm going to die, I'll take this piece of garbage with me. Okay, we'll get you a car. Let's just take it down a notch and we'll... Damn it! Who took that shot? I did. My prince, that was incredibly dangerous. You could have killed Lord Capone. Yes, but I didn't. I saved him instead. What? What's going on? Jacob? What the? Why is everyone standing around me? Sir, there was a... a security breach. It appears foreign agents sedated you and attempted to access restricted intel from your office. Yes, this young lady here with the head wound, she... we... Oh, we, we were playing a game. Wait, where's the other one? She's upstairs in your office. She's dead too. We shot her in the head as well. New Kingdom Radio Theater. Hi, my name is Melissa and I'm the host of The Haunted Ride a paranormal and spiritual podcast. Every week I share some of my own personal stories and a few of yours as well. We talk about things from spirits to ghosts, demons, angels, cryptids, or any experience that just seems a little too weird, and you honestly can't call it normal. What if you've communicated with a ghost? You feel other people's emotions? Maybe you're questioning if you're an empath, medium, or could even be a psychic. Well, we cover that too. So join me every Monday on your favorite podcast player and tune in as we talk about all the great and sometimes scary things that happen through this haunted journey we call life. Because ghosts are out there. And if you're not careful, they will get you. Jacob became the new regent, and Princess Monica lobbied for him to summon Lord Richards, who was working on behalf of the king in Africa. Monica convinced Jacob Lord Richards could provide good advice as he settled into his new role. Richards came to New Eden to assist his prince, but also to assist Princess Monica with her plan. Richards, Prince Jacob, and Monica discussed future plans for when Silas was no longer king. Richards anticipated a very important role in the kingdom under a King Jacob. At first, their conversations were late but it didn't take long for Princess Monica and Lord Richards to turn their attention to King Silas's vulnerabilities. And they even joked about leaving the king open to an assassination. Monica said she would prepare Jacob for an ascension to the throne sooner rather than later. 
just in case. Look, Lord Richards, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. I'm just exploring all the different possibilities. Possibilities? <laughs> With all due respect, my princess, these conversations we've been having would be considered treasonous. Suggesting we expose our king to an assassination is so incredibly dangerous. Honestly, you don't understand how powerful Silas truly is. <laughs> He's just a man. He bleeds, he gets sick, and he breathes like everyone else. But he's not like everyone else. There are many things about the king the public doesn't know. They can't know. And I can't say what they are, because I don't know the extent of his capabilities either. But you know some things. Maybe even his weaknesses. Don't you? What's the harm in telling me? You really don't understand. A Silas can read people's minds. He can sense traitors around him. He's incredibly accurate in his hunches. The very fact we're talking about this, he might pick up on it. We're probably already in danger. Don't be such a coward. How would he know what we talk about? Tell me. When was the last time you were even in the same room with the king? Are you even helping him with the war effort? I'm really not supposed to talk about that, one way or the other. My apologies, my princess. But I will tell you, I am not involved in the war effort. I just give my opinion when it's asked of me. I haven't had a face-to-face -face meeting with him since we met in Israel. After the Antarctica campaign, when he rode off on his white horse? God, that man is such a drama queen. Look, if you're serious about this, and you really want me to risk my life, then you need to tell me who else you are involved with in this plot. Excuse me? No one. I make my own moves here, Lord Richards. I'm going to be queen someday, no matter what. What I meant was, are you discussing these matters with anyone else? If I was, hypothetically, I would include them in our discussions when the time was right. Understand? I understand, my princess. I need you to do right now is try to anticipate where the king will travel to in the coming months. We have some time, now that you're here to help Jacob in his transition. I know we need to take baby steps, but I assure you, once Jacob becomes king, I will be running the kingdom and the whole world. And you, Lord Richards, will be one of the most powerful men on the face of the earth.
As King Silas' war efforts against the Middle Eastern alliance and China continued to unfold, Pope Innocent XIV quietly became more influential around the world. People made many pilgrimages to the Vatican for a chance to see the Pope. Many hoped he would touch their sick loved ones and heal them. He also traveled to other parts of the world, especially those torn by the Great Revolution, and healed the sick. <coughs> but behind the scenes, Pope Innocent XIV was mad with vengeance in his heart. His predecessor, Pope Pius XIV, had scorned him as a cardinal. The two men quarreled endlessly. While the world sung the praises of the most beloved Pope in many generations, he secretly ordered the body of Pope Pius XIV to be exhumed from his crypt. He wanted Pius to stand trial for crimes committed when he was alive. The corpse of Pius was dressed in traditional papal attire and was assigned a lawyer to defend his actions. After what was dubbed the corpse trial, Pope Innocent found Pius guilty of illegally obtaining the papacy, the rape of minors, crimes against the church, and sentenced him to have his three right blessing fingers severed. The severed fingers were burned and his body thrown into the city sewer system, where it was later fished out by locals and given a proper burial. Holy Father, I've come to Vatican City for your blessings. I wanted you to hear it from me first, before our war campaign in China and the Middle East took a drastic turn. The headlines will likely paint me as a true monster, more than they already have. My son, may my blessings protect you, and may God's grace light your path always. Believe me, I am one of the few on this planet who truly understands your plight and your agony. Holy Father, I am unsure if my chosen methods could ever be forgiven. Even though everything inside my soul tells me I must do the deeds I am about to do. Come closer. Tell your Holy Father what it is that troubles you. Millions and millions of Chinese citizens will perish in what will appear as a plague. They will suffer intensely. The thought of it sickens me, but their resistance leaves me no choice. My son, the Chinese, most of them have denied their creator. For centuries, they fought against our church, against Christ, and against God himself. If your heart tells you that this is the best course of action, then trust in that. If God wills your success, in the end, we will all know you were right and just in your actions. You are so different than the last pope. He, he always thought my decisions were evil and insane. Pius had many dark secrets of his own, Asilas. And not even death could conceal all his deeds, nor spare his ultimate judgment. <laughs> you mean the corpse trial? <laughs> I suppose it was foolish of me to think that information would escape you. I'm the last person on earth qualified to judge you about it, Holy Father. But honestly, I would not be a very effective king of the world if these types of things went unnoticed. It, it isn't a big deal to me. Of course, my son. You have more pressing matters. Come here. Stand a little closer. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I bless you. Go and do what you must with the light of the Lord in your heart. And don't worry about what the public thinks of your actions. You leave their opinions to me. I've been instructed to tell you that you've been reassigned. Re- reassigned? To where? It's been decided, given the situation here, the distractions you caused, that it's best for you to be out of sight for a while. You're being sent to Antarctica to oversee the operations there. Antarctica? W- w- why send me there? There's nothing to oversee. The Drax base has been destroyed. Hardly anybody is there now. Good. Maybe you'll show some restraint with a few people around. Besides, the Drax base still has that mysterious portal. You will be in charge of the team of scientists trying to figure out how the portal works. That's your assignment. If you don't like it, then I suggest you file a complaint with the High Council and the King if you want. I don't need to complain to them. You are the Regent. You are essentially the King. If you want to reverse this decision, it's perfectly within your right to do so. And why should I reverse this order, huh? Tell me why you should spend another minute here at the castle. You've done nothing but treat this beautiful, pristine place like it was your personal whorehouse. Do you really think your presence here is helping anyone? I admit I screwed up, but... Screwed up? (laughs) Lord Capone, you defiled this castle my father built. This was supposed to be a sacred place. A clean, pure place where everyday citizens can have their weddings, picnics, and have their children play in our many beautiful gardens. This is America's castle, not Lord Capone's Zanana. My prince, I know you are a decent young man. A man of integrity and goodwill, I assure you, my actions here will not go unpunished for the rest of my life. But I ask you to please not send me away, especially not to Antarctica. I want to remain here with my wife and family. I can serve you and the king better if I stay in New Eden. You are a piece of work, Capone. Do you really think your wife even wants you here? After the humiliation she's had to endure with you? Tell me something. Were you thinking about Geraldine when you had that disgusting harem of women in the castle basement? You have the audacity to use her and your kids as a reason for me to reconsider keeping you here? I honestly can't understand why my father holds you in such high regards. It truly befuddles me. My prince... What your father and I have is trust. No matter how much I screw up, with Geraldine or anyone else, I would gladly die for your father. Not just because he is my king, but because he is my friend. The best friend and ally a man could ever ask for. Hope and pray that someday you will have people around you that you love and trust with your life, as your father has with me. Because without that, you will never have anyone to share your true self with. I know what I did was wrong. And I am ashamed of it. Believe me, I am. But nothing I did here endangered my king. Or you. Or anyone else. I completely disagree. If those Chinese agents had gotten their hands on classified information on your computer, It would have been a disaster of epic proportions. You put the entire kingdom at risk with your stupidity. I'm going to give you one hour. Lord Capone, one hour. I suggest you pack your things and say goodbye to your family while you still have a moment. That is all. 
dismissed. My brothers and sisters in Christ, every moment and every good deed we do in this world is a blessing that should never be taken for granted. And we should never second guess what we do for the sake of others, especially if we are given indications from our Lord that we must do them. Such is the case for maintaining the purity of law, especially the laws handed down by Moses on Mount Sinai. St. Paul believed in these pure laws, as we all do. So much so that he was obsessed with them, and he was forceful about the sanctity of the laws. But what many don't realize is St. Paul was consistent because his heart and mind were open to God all the time, even in persecuting Christians. Yes, St. Paul persecuted Christians. Indeed, he did. He did so because he believed it was God's will. You may ponder this, and ask yourself how this was even possible. How could a man destined to be a saint in the Holy Catholic Church think God desired for Christians to be persecuted? But focusing on this is truly beside the point. The fact is, St. Paul believed in his heart it was God's will, and this is why he carried out his deeds. Convinced they were just. This was the devotion and eagerness he cradled in his heart because it was for the purity of the house of God. For the glory of our almighty creator. His heart openly received instructions from the Lord and risked everything, going full force to complete his mission. I ask you all to reflect on this, to envision this dichotomy in your minds and relate this to our King. A Silas, like St. Paul was, is a forceful man. And like St. Paul, he carries on to honor the purity of the house of God, no matter the personal cost and no matter the burden. Are his actions the symptom of a stubborn man? We are all stubborn in our own way. Are our actions the symptoms of stubbornness? Stubbornness is something we can all relate to. So St. Paul and King Asilas are like us in that regard. However, Asilas is more like St. Paul in the way God speaks to him. That's right. King Asilas has a heart that is open to the voice of God. Like Moses, like St. Paul, like few others that have ever walked this earth. The king asks for guidance. He asks, what should I do, Lord? And like a child being led by the hand, our king goes and does what God desires in this world. It is time we all stop questioning our king so much and begin accepting the truth. 
that he will lead us all to the promised land. Keep the silence, keep the silence, You've been listening to The Rise of King Asylus, episode 36, Miracles and Malice, starring J.V. Torres as King Asylus, David S. Deer as Pope Innocent XIV, John Doby as Lord Quentin Capone, Dominic Nataro as Prince and Jacob, Layla Benet as Princess Monica, Victor Mapp as Lord Andrew Richards. Lynn Spencer as Spartan Mendez, Tim Long as Spartan Thomas, Betty Chen as Chinese Woman, and narrated by Sergei Brazhnikov. This episode features the song, Walk With Danger by Shake Some Action. Download the music of Shake Some Action on Bandcamp.com today. For more information about the cast, the music, or other contributors to this production, please visit us at www.theriseofkingasilas.com for a full list on our Season 3 episode page. And now a word from our podcast friends. Hi, I'm Caprice, and I'm the host of The Unseen Podcast. We look at missing person cases unresolved crimes and lesser known stories from around the UK. We delve into cases that do not gain public attention, such as unidentified people and historic cold cases. If you're interested in true crime from the UK, then you might be interested in having a listen to the unseen. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. This has been a production of the New Kingdom Radio Theater in Baltimore, Maryland, copyright 2020, and stay tuned for episode 37.